WF representing Paddy. So Yes, guys, welcome back to Transfer Weekly. Uh, I'm very eager to get going with this one because after Glasmus come into Palace, we've done a madness. And there's been a lot of madness on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well, because the amount of rumours that we're flying through in the first few weeks, I thought, you know what, the transfer window hasn't opened yet. But I think that, you know, we, we just need to get going with this. Start a few weeks early because the rumours are going crazy at the moment. Also, please remember that we do post daily on our shorts and other social media. So if you want daily uploads and daily news, please look there so you can get a little bit more up to date news. It won't be as in depth, but we'll get the news out to you as soon as it comes to us. Also, I want to really thank everyone that's watching this for showing support on previous times when I've done this show and also support on the whole channel in general because the growth has been amazing and we really appreciate the support that you guys are giving to us so far. Also, I want to say before I even start that this was recorded on Friday the 31st of May, so if anything's changed between now and when the videos actually come out, I apologise. I tried to make it so I recorded it as late as possible so that I could give you guys the most news possible as well. But it is what it is. Things are moving so fast and let's hope that I get some of it right and let's hope that I didn't miss anything. Yes, guys, let's get straight into this one. First up today, we've got Daishi Kamada. Uh, he's a Japanese attacking midfielder who's currently linked with Crystal Palace after having a pretty unsuccessful loan at Lazio last season. He was at Frankfurt where he won a Europa League with a certain Oliver Glasner. Um... When they won the Europa League against Rangers in a penalty shootout in the final in 2022, uh, he will also be the first Japanese player to ever feature or play for Crystal Palace in the first team as far as I can see when I do my research. Please forgive me if I mispronounce this name, but reported by Ludovica Lambolgilia. In an article on TMV Radio Sport, it is stated that Crystal Palace have offered him a five-year contract with £5 million salary a year, plus bonuses, and this this equates to about hundred grand a year. And if you think about it like that, then it's hundred grand a year for five years. I think it will cost around £25 million in total, but if I'm honest, that isn't really the end of the world, because with losing Tomkins and Gyro, we're probably losing about hundred grand a week in wages on its own when having those guys. And also, he's a free transfer, so apparently we are allowing to pay a little bit more if we're not paying any money in transfer fee so don't know whether that's a good move or not but I think it is as he is a 27 year old Europa League winner he is very talented and he will bring a lot of much needed experience into this Crystal Palace team this is because I think that he'll come off the bench depending on what happens with Eze and Elise if they both stay, then he'll definitely be coming off the bench to help aid in later on into the game when one of those guys gets substituted. Or if one of them go, he is more than capable of filling in in that Eze role. He's not that Michael Elise style of player, but he will definitely fill the role of Eze if he goes. He won't be as good, but it's still an incredible thing to do for a free transfer to get a player like him. Also, this only happened today, so a madness has happened, like I said. Uh, he was offered a contract with Lazio and basically they wanted to give him a release clause. He was happy with the release clause, but they wanted to give it a £20 million release clause. This was too much in the eyes of Kamada. And then he got on the phone with Mr. Oliver Glasner and Glasner said, you know what? Come to Palace, man. You get some game time here. You might not be the starting player, but you get a lot more money than you're on now. And we are pushing for Europe. So let's see what happens um apparently that changed his mind and then crystal palace then started to fly their reps over to italy i think that's a little subtle detail that probably gets glossed over a little bit because sending our reps to him rather than making him come to us it sort of shows how willing we are that we want him in this transfer and probably makes him feel good you know because we're set because he's comfortable where he is you know you'd rather stay at home and you know, to for us to make the advances and to make it seem like we want him a lot and to show the commitment we have to him, I think doing that is the right move from Mr. Dougie Freeman. Kamada is a very, very techie baller. He is very similar into his playing style as Eze, where he likes to drive at the 
opposition. He likes to pass through the lines and he likes to be a man with some pace and some close dribbling and potentially even some running in behind as well as he is a master of scoring goals with late runs into the box. Uh, he, Even though he's six foot tall, he's a very slender build, so he's very light on his feet and he can change directions very quickly. And he just seems to be a bit of a handful for any defender to defend against. As seen in the images below, he's able to pick up the ball from in between the lines from multiple angles. He's able to pick up the ball, turn using close control with both feet to then drive forwards to then attract lots of players towards him to then relieve pressure of other players to then assist them or even score a goal in these pressure situations. Also, if you see here, he's great with one-touch passing, so he's able to strike the ball through on the first touch. As seen here, when he's playing for Japan, the ball came to him, and on his first touch, he put the ball through to the striker for the striker to then be through one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper. Uh, finally, showing his quick skill and quick thinking, he's just really technical on the ball. He's able to take a touch here with the outside of his boot and then run around the player making him look a bit stupid and then dribble away and then find a nice pass into the opposition third. Overall, I think this would be an absolutely incredible signing for Crystal Palace. Whether he is for the bench or whether he is to start, as a free transfer, you really can't complain. And I think that a player of his stature, having that experience of winning a European trophy, I feel like that is much needed in this squad. Uh, also, just building a squad in general just feels alien to me and all other Crystal Palace fans because we're looking at players and we're thinking what is happening they can't all start but we're so conditioned to only buy players for the starting 11 that when we're trying to build a squad we think everyone's too good to sit on the bench because we're just not used to having a good squad but I'm happy to see it let's move on Chadi Riyad is a Moroccan centre-back who was on loan at Real Betis last season from his home club Barcelona He's been very impressive this season to other teams in Europe, not only Crystal Palace. He's probably the first signing of the summer for Crystal Palace. It's been confirmed by many people that it's done, it's this, it's that. But I'm not going to say it's confirmed and so I see Crystal Palace official club announcing him. But from what I can see so far, he's almost done. Uh, also, I want to say something. In my short, I did say that he was Spanish and not Moroccan. He's a 20-year-old Spanish centre-back. However, if you look a little bit into the player profile, as you can see here, his place, wow. of, his place of birth was Mallorca, and he's got dual citizenship for Morocco and Spain. So technically, I... wasn't wrong just saying apparently palace have been scouting for this player for a while because ryan taylor's reported in the mirror that we sent an opening bid in for this player on the 21st of may which was slightly below rare betis's evaluation purely because barcelona have such a big sell-on fee from what my understanding is is that um rare betis have a um an option to buy and they're going to trigger that option to buy which is about four or five million pounds or euros but what they're going to do is they're going to buy him from barcelona and barcelona have a sell-on clause within that and then they're going to sell him to us so barcelona get a good chunk of it i think they get like two million pounds out of this deal so it's a good deal for both teams are both getting profit out of this and we're getting a great player out of it as well even though our first offer didn't meet their full valuation, we then came back with a 12 million upfront with 2 million add ons. But those add ons are going straight into Barcelona's pocket. Uh, even though Fabrizio Romano here says that uh, it's all done, he did use the wrong flag. He's not Brazilian. I don't think my mistake was as bad as calling him Brazilian. But it is what it is. Uh, as a 20 year old who spent most of his youth career at Barcelona, he's been brought up with a winner's mentality. And by watching him play, you can see why Palace wanted him so bad. As a depth option, yes, you heard me, a depth option. He will be absolutely incredible for us at that centre-back role. And potentially, if we don't get anyone else in at the centre-back role, he will start for us. He is that good. <laughs> also, with him being so young, only 20 years old, he's got the potential to become an all-timer in this team. If he can potentially come in, have one season on loan, not even one season on loan, if he could potentially come in, have one season on the bench, backing up one of our main guys, and then progressing even further when either we sell someone like Anderson or Mark Gay, let's say, 
this is a perfect career path for him to get used to a, a league, get used to a country, and then in a few years, then move up into that first team. It's the perfect scenario for a young defender. Unless you're Adam Wharton, obviously, and you're just the best player in the world. Uh, as we can see here, he is a defender that prides himself on his strength and his ability to read the game. He intercepts the ball so well, and he can pass so well under pressure. As seen here, he's able to use his strength, and he's able to read the fact that there is a heavy touch on the ball, and he's able to sweep the ball away. Also seen here, he's able to pass in between the lines with both feet. He's able to do it in short and long ranges, uh, where the player comes short and he's able to ping it into them and then they can start building up play from there overall i feel like this would be a really great appointment for crystal palace definitely good enough to start for us like i said but i feel like he's going to be an absolutely incredible depth option just think about that back line at the moment chris richards on the left center back Joachim Anderson in the central center back and riyad in the right center back Obviously, it's a bit harsh to be replacing Klein, but I do believe that we need that aerial and that physical presence in that right centre-back role. But Klein is more than good enough to maybe back him up if he is to take that centre-back spot. But where's Mark Gay, you might ask? Yes, Mr. Mark Gay. Why haven't I listed him in my potential back three? This is because I believe that Mark Gay is unfortunately the one that is going to be leaving us in this summer transfer window. He's a 23-year-old English centre-back that currently plays for us and he's part of the big four that I wish we could keep all four of them. Mark Gay, Chet Decore, Ebere Eze and Michael Lise. Those are the main players that I think are at risk at leaving and probably are four best players. Adding Wharton to that now, adding Anderson to that now, adding Munoz to that now. I wish that we could just have a season where we just kept everyone and just increased the squad and, you know, I don't know what would have happened, but I think that we would have had an incredible team if that happened. But I do believe that he is genuinely a world-class centre-back and he's 100% worth the money that we're asking. Potentially, we are asking for around about £65 million from Man United. Um I don't want to let him go under ideal circumstances, but he's only on a he's only got two years left on his contract at the moment at Crystal Palace, but he is unwilling to sign a new deal. And with two years left on his contract, we have to sell him now to get any sort of good valuation from him. So the be the only thing to do is if he's not signing that deal, he's got to go. And that's an unfortunate thing to say, but that's just what needs to happen. With that money, we could potentially get replacements, get other people, and also build up the squad as well, because we will make a significant amount of profit when selling Mark Gay, especially if we sell him in the Premier League as well. Uh, Chris Wheeler did an article on Mail Sport stating that Manchester United are interested in signing Mark, but Palace have put a £65 million price tag on him. However, Man United's main target is Jared Bramthwaite from Everton however Everton won minimum 80 million pounds so if you look at it that way Mark Gay is 100% the better option not only one do I think that Mark is the better centre back in general but two he'll be 15 million pounds cheaper so in my opinion I think that Mark is probably the right way to go but if you look at it from Man United's perspective if they're going to be keeping Martinez they probably need another guy another centre back in there that is very tall and very physical Mark is 100% physical, but he's not the tallest guy in the world. But he's an outstanding centre-back. He will improve any team in the Premier League right now, and I'm not even joking with that. So wherever he goes, I really hope he does amazing for himself, and I really hope that he is that player that can improve Manchester United to take them back to what they once were. Um, but there is a little bit of contract gymnastics, is what I'll call it, because if we sell Mark... Uh, Chelsea, when we bought him, they have a little clause in there saying that whatever the best op um, whatever the best offer is, Chelsea have the ability to match it. And this means that potentially we could do a little bidding war between Manchester United and Chelsea. Because if Chelsea won him, I know they've got more money than £65 million because they've been spending their madness lately. So hopefully we're going to get a little bit of a bidding war going. And you know what? We could even get a little bit more than the 65 that we're asking for in the first place. Obviously, like I said before, I do not want Mark to go, but if there was one of them to go, I think that Mark would be the one. And I really hope it's not, because he is an absolutely incredible centre-back. And I think, speaking for all Palace fans, I don't want to sell anyone, but when do we ever want to sell anyone? We are Crystal Palace. We just 
get this bond with players and we just don't want to sell them even if they're rubbish. All right, on to the last one. And I'm not sure if I can completely believe this one. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Finally, a certain Jude Bellingham. Oh, no, wait. Job Bellingham. He is an 18-year-old attacking midfielder that currently plays for Sunderland and he had a very successful first season at Sunderland. So much so that he's been recognised by teams in the Premier League such as Crystal Palace and Brentford and also other teams around Europe. And this is not because he is the brother of Jude Bellingham, it's because Job Bellingham is also a very special talent. Job Bellingham was surprisingly linked to Crystal Palace and funny enough, a few weeks ago on the stream, I can't exactly remember which one, but I'm going to go back and try and find the clip in the edit of this. I did say that if there was one player that I wanted to sign in this transfer window, I did say I do think it's a bit out of reach, but I would like a certain Job Bellingham to back up Eze and... Earlier on today, Fabrizio Romano and Bobby Manzi both reported that he will be a priority signing for us in this summer window. Apparently, we've been scouting him for months and Bobby Manzi has actually done a report on him and saying the young player that is a star. And everyone thought, oh, it's probably someone like this or that. But no one expected Job Bellingham. And what's really cool is that Palace are looking at these insanely talented young players from the championship. And if you're a championship player you must be looking at Crystal Palace thinking I hope they come in for me because if they do I'm going to get a straight path into the Premier League and they're going to trust me and that's really what every championship player wants to see right now when a bigger team is looking down and trying to say look I can make you a star and we've got an incredible track record Wharton, Eze, Elise, Mark like the list goes on and we've just been doing this over and over and over again so someone with huge potential like him and it's already got the clout of that name because of his brother, but also because of the special talent that he is on his own as a separate entity of Jude Bellingham. He's just a completely different kind of player, but he plays in a similar position. It's just something that just really excites a lot of fans, and everyone's just a bit amazed that this is even a thing, that I'm even talking about it right now. Uh, also, for him being so young, only 18 years old, and he's had two first team seasons in the championship one for Birmingham and now one for Sunderland as well like he's had a lot of football at such a young age and what was another really young player that we bought that had a lot of football under their belt performing really well in their team in the championship and then get bought by Crystal Palace a certain Michael Elise probably the best player outside of the top six at the moment so not saying anything but you know something some something mad could happen here uh Job is a number 10, but he can also play in that number 8 role because he ex excels with tracking back and getting in some good tackles and passing through the lines. Uh, but he's also very capable of doing that 10 role as well. He's able to pick up the ball, pass through the lines, as I said, in an attacking way, but he's also able to dribble at people and frighten the hell out of defenders, and he is a menace to deal with if you are a defender in the championship and probably in the premier league as well as shown in these images down below he's very able to run back tackle get a great block in you know just be there the work ethic is there he's just talented and he's got a lot of desire to just improve and make sure that he shows everyone in the world that he's not his brother but he is a separate entity he is a special talent and He's able to do stuff like this, and he's also able to attack after he makes a game-changing tackle. Uh, as shown here, he's able to score goals as well, because he also excels, just like Kamada, with late runs into the box, finding lots of space in the box, finding space outside of the box at certain times as well. But for someone of his age to have that awareness, that skill to arrive late in the box, also the composure to finish within the box as well, with one-touch finishing... It's just an absolutely valuable asset that I can't understate. I can't overstate enough, I mean, because it would be amazing for maybe even him to start in the game where he have the composure to play through the lines, to score goals, or even to come on late to win us a game, like if he's coming off the bench. It's just a, a player that has so many tools. I'd just be so excited to see what he can do for us. Also, being able to run at defenders. As seen here, this is just one clip, but he's done it many times. He's got some good goal-scoring numbers, and we'll probably delve deeper into that depending on what happens with this transfer rumour. Scored a beautiful goal here where he runs down the wing, chops inside, as you can see. He makes, he makes it so that he chops the ball onto his right foot, 
and then he slams it into the top corner uh, the reported price is 18 million pounds but if you compare that to adam wharton it's actually not that bad and whether it's going to be a Eze replacement or someone to back up Eze next season depending on what happens with Eze, whether he goes or not i feel like it's a great transfer whether he stays or goes because if he goes i feel like he will come good if you give him the game time and you give him a trust However, if you also give him a year to adapt while Eze stays for another year and then goes, then I think that it'll be just as good. He'll come into the team the next year, an absolutely incredible player, and I'm just really excited to see what he'll be able to do in the Premier League within Oliver Glasner's system. And I'm just getting excited thinking of, imagine our ten, our number 10 options. If Eze and Elise both go, and I'm only saying if because there might be a chance we keep them, but imagine our tens of being Bellingham, Franca, Kamada and Ayu. Those ten options are very excited to me and let's see if Glasner and Dougie's pool is able to do some magic. Yes guys and that is it for Transfer Weekly this week. Please put in the comments below what players you want me to cover and your thoughts on the players I have covered so far today. Uh, also please remember to like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching Up The Palace. Eagles! Shoot.